Hey guys, I'm going to be showing you how to use Prisma with an existing database you might have. Now to show you this, I'm going to be using the database that I created when I did the Slack clone. So I can show you guys that right now. Uh, we can see there's quite a few tables. It's not huge, so there's 14 in all, but it has quite a few relations and whatnot and it's a little bit complex just with everything relating to each other. So we're going to try and see how Prisma handles this and if we can use this database with it. So to do this, we're going to be using the Prisma CLI. So make sure you have that installed. If you don't, you can run npm-i-g Prisma to install it. And then after that, you can run Prisma init. And I'm just going to call my project Hello World. And it's going to ask you a series of questions. And I'm going to choose um, use an existing database right here and after that I'm going to choose PostgreSQL and then lastly this experimental um, one and what this experimental thing does is it checks your database and it uses introspection as it's talking about here and it actually creates a uh, GraphQL schema out of it and we just have to specify how to access it so by default, localhost, and that's where my database is running. Uh, the default port works as well. User, I'm going to say Postgres. Uh, same for the password. And then the name of the database is Slack Temp. Um, I went ahead and just cloned the database just to make sure in case it like destroyed it or something. And then the existing schema is public. And uh, now it goes ahead and creates a folder called Hello World. And inside of it, there's some stuff. So I'm just going to open that up with Visual Studio Code, and we can take a look at it. So there is three files. Uh, the most interesting one is this data model.graphql. So here is that GraphQL types that I was talking about. So it auto-generated this stuff from my uh, database. And we can see pretty much all the tables, and each table corresponds to a type. And we can kind of see right here the type, and they map the type to a name. And we can see basically all our fields and whatnot and how they relate. And we have a Docker Compose file here to actually start up the server. And what we can do is we need to change the host because it's going to be running in Docker. And for Docker, cannot access localhost uh, by itself we need to say host.docker.internal and I'm just going to get rid of those for the port and everything else looks good so I can actually start up this Prisma server and deploy this schema and we can see what happens so I'm going to say docker compose up and I'm going to open in another tab and we're going to try deploying to this and we'll see if we're able to uh, create our database and uh, query it and whatnot. So I'm now going to say Prisma deploy and I'm in the same folder and we're about to see quite a few errors because I've already tried this and uh, we're just going to look at them and see what's going on. So basically this means it is having trouble when it actually created the uh, GraphQL stuff, all the types here. It did not correctly do it, at least it didn't match up well with the database or whatnot. So um, as, as we saw, this is an experimental feature, so that's expected that not everything will work. So I was curious to what extent it did not work. So the first error I saw was um, this ID so it's reserved to the format of um, ID unique or ID um, is either an int unique basically the ID needs to be of the type ID or int and it has to be unique if we take a look here we can see our ID does not have the unique flag or directive so we could add this if we want to so I can say ID int and I can replace them all and I can add at the end the at unique and replace that. So now everywhere in the file and we can rerun the deploy and we can see a few of the errors will go away. Um, this 
has to do with uh, IDs missing on the field. So this is for channel member. Um, and this is actually a join table. So this is a join table and uh, for a many to many relationship, which usually you actually don't have IDs on. So I, I thought this was kind of interesting that they want to have an ID on every single table, but I thought that's fine. And I was like, I can just copy an ID on this channel name and basically every single join table that I have. So members a join table as well. Um, I think members is everything that doesn't have an ID, we can just, just slap it on there. And yes. And we can redeploy. And I think we should be down to two or four errors. Ah, uh, yes. So on our users, for whatever reason, they actually just printed out it twice. So I can delete one of them. And then you'll notice there's this double S. It looks like they tried to add plurals to the name, um, but they didn't account for an S being at the end at some of these. So it has double S now. That's why it looks a, couple, a little weird at a couple places. Um, and then this last error is with this relationship with a direct message. So if I come up here, it is right there. Okay, so I have this PG relation. Um, set up and I guess it doesn't want to be called PG relation or uh, I thought maybe I needed to supply this name attribute to PG relation so I tried that I was like um, DM receiver and we can give this the name of direct message sender and we now have a name on our relation uh, didn't like that either, it just gave us a new error. Um, or I guess it's the same error, so it doesn't even recognize that this name is a thing. So then I was like, okay, it must not recognize that PG relation is a thing. But the weird thing is, it's only receiver and sender that it doesn't like on this table. Like for example, team right here is using the same directive, no problem. So that was a little weird. So. I change this to the relation, see if I could get that to work like that. Um, and that was another error. And this could just be me, I need to like add relations somewhere else to connect this. That might be the thing. Um, but then it tells me that I'm trying to set this relationship and then I need to set it up over in my users. I wasn't quite sure how to set this up, or I guess I have it set up and I wasn't sure how to which directive I needed to add here. So I just went ahead and deleted direct message. And so now it's just a one-way relationship. Uh, and I was gonna see if that would work, but that did not work either. Um, and basically I kind of just got stumped on this little error right here. Um, so I was like, uh, we can go ahead and just remove these. This was an interesting error right here though. It says this name um, can only be 54 characters long and it must be of this shape. So it looks like you can have uppercase, lowercase um, letters, which I didn't do anything other than that. Um, and it's not longer than 54 characters, so I'm not sure what happened there. But I was like, all right, let's just delete those and see if we can deploy. And sure enough, we can actually deploy now. Um, and I thought it worked, um, but it does not. So if we come over here to Docker Compose, um, and we can actually just try connecting to this uh, service now. So if I open up Chrome and we go to localhost 4466 and we're going there because we specified that location in our prisma.yaml. I don't know if it's, I guess we're also specifying it here. I think it's in our Docker Compose. Yeah, here's the port. Um, but as soon as we try opening this up, you'll see it says server cannot be reached. And if we come look at our log for Docker Compose, um, we got some nice um, error messages. So this looks like the thing that's causing the error. Uh, does not have unique names, members, or whatnot. So at this point, I was like, all right, this is enough errors. I'm gonna stop trying to get this to work. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and just put these issues on Prisma and let them know about it. And if you guys wanted to give it a try and give them some feedback, because this is an experimental feature, so it's not expected to work. Um, but it was kind of cool seeing my database being created like this. And hopefully they can get it working uh, so we don't have to make these changes. But uh, 
this does not quite work at least with this type of database um, which is not the simplest I guess so that's it for this video guys try it out with your database see if you can get it to work um, and yeah make sure to give them some issues on their github and make sure uh, that way they can improve it and get it working